Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dynamic Divas. I am Rachit, your host for the show. I'm a brown man in my early 40s. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm wearing a black and white hoodie today, my glasses, and I have short hairs which are slowly turning gray. At Dynamic Divas, we celebrate remarkable women shaping the world of technology. And today we have a very smart and intelligent lady ready to share her experiences with us. Bringing with her more than a decade of experience as a developer and getting recognized as Microsoft's most valuable professional in M365 development category this year. Please welcome Reshmi Oklu joining us today from United Kingdoms. Reshmi, it's an honor to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So I will try to uh, to do the inclusive introduction of myself. So I'm a brown woman in the late thirties, and uh, I'm wearing glasses uh, and I have long hair. Uh, okay, I can't really see my top, but it's a stripy uh, dark navy blue top, and uh, my pronouns are she and her. <laughs> and now, uh, and thank you for it. Uh, kind introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. It's my honor to have you on the show. So maybe Reshmi, we'll just start uh, with your journey in the world of technology, M365. Uh, if you can share your journey so far of last one decade with our audiences, that would really help. Not from technology, like too deep into technology, but it's more about your experience in the world of technology. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, I mean, I kind of started uh, learning about computers back when I started um, um, what you call secondary education back in Mauritius, but that was like a very kind of introductory level, just going through history or computer science, but that was not like really uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was it. But yeah, so I, yeah, I don't know, but it kind of really kind of made the impact um, on me, like to kind of decide on a career of IT. Um, and then after I finish my, um, we do what we call like the, um, the uh, higher school certificate in Mauritius, uh, which we follow like the same uh, British education system. Um, um, yeah, I kind of uh, pick all science subject because I wanted to further a career in uh, in the uh, science field. Uh, but um, having to pick my career, it was kind of a uh, quite of a tricky one because at that time, technology, computer was still kind of evolving, new, and I was not so sure whether it was a career for me. But at that time, um, I wanted to be sure after I finish my degree, I get a job. So that's for yes. job security. Uh, that's why I pick, decided to do something. Again, I wasn't so sure, so I picked like a mixed degree, which was management with information system. So again, <laughs> it was just yeah. based on my uh, indices, indecision at that time. And um, again, related to my background, I would say um, it was not like a very easy uh, path because again, uh, it, uh, considering my background, we were kind of uh, a big family with many siblings and uh, I was the first one like to go to university uh, and uh, yeah, based uh, on my on merits, I was able to apply yeah. for a scholarship and get a scholarship to cover the fees, even my uh, living expenses, and yeah. So uh, and then um, and I particularly enjoyed the um, information system or the computer modules I was doing at university um, in comparison to the management accounting modules. I've, I've been doing and I've not really use them, but it kind of help understanding the business side. Uh, whenever you talk to end users trying to gather requirements, it kind of uh, help a lot. And my first uh, job was more as a .NET developer um, using Visual Basic at that time. I don't know if anyone yes. still feels the issue using yes. Visual Basic. Feels so nostalgic <laughs> still, right? Like I remember probably similar uh, timing when I did my uh, 
graduation and it was all about IT buzz and yeah, we used to learn bb.net at that time. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I did. And um, and then soon um, start uh, followed with uh, C sharp and then um, yeah, so that was still like back in Mauritius. And then, um, yeah, I decided to move to the UK uh, just to explore the world, to see more. And my first job in the UK was uh, with a consultancy firm. And that's I guess, my first exposure with uh, SharePoint and Project Server. And uh, still doing uh, some .NET, but very less. And um, before I moved to, uh, to my current role, which is a software developer at Pension Protection Fund, and um, and uh, so again, uh, I've been doing um, SharePoint on premise um, uh, and uh, work a little bit on Dynamics uh, 2015, <laughs> not too much. Oh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of technologies you are working on. <laughs> yeah. It kind of helped a lot, like to understand dataverse because. Um, um, like especially the back end, uh, the database, uh, the entities, the relationships, and everything. Uh, it, even in terms of the solutions, manage and manage, it kind of make more sense. Even if you have like the on premise background, it's just make it a little bit easier to understand uh, the power platform. Uh, even it's not yeah. the same. I know, <laughs> but. <laughs> it's loads of similarities. I think it's the same. Like um, since we, I started my cloud journey, like three or four years back. Um, yeah. Again, there's loads of concept which still kind of applied, um, and uh, obviously it just opened a lot more uh, functionalities and opportunities, like to extend the out of out of the box platform, uh, which is um, amazing, and uh, and that's when. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of in terms of learning curve as well. Uh, I would say like being in the IT field, it's like it's like always continuous learning. It's like every day is like a school. You just like learn something new. <laughs> the L, L sign is always on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, yes, so, um, so it's kind of, um, yeah, and then that's kind of, um, that's how, um, and then I found that like, compared to my beginning career, which was like uh, a decade back, um, when I remembered like I was working like in a very restrictive environment where we didn't have access to internet connection and we still have to build solution and the only source of information was just like MSDN. And then you right. have like to really write all the code from scratch line right. after line. <laughs> <laughs> I I totally resonate with that. <laughs> you have few projects layer where where you can't even access internet, but you still have to write the code. <laughs> yes. Those yeah, are hard times. Yeah. Yeah, we use our hard times. Yeah. I mean, even now, um, but now it's just um I don't know whether you have the same feeling. It's just like uh, at that time it's like the number of possibilities of building things were a little bit less but now when you consider like the amount of technologies we have to consider or even like even on on our platform it's just like the possibilities are kind of like really vast and it's yes. hard like to pick like the right solutions what you're going to do if you have like a, a simple even like a simple application where you're going to build it on dataverse are you going to use sharepoint are you going to use teams or or something and it's just like it just it just makes it so difficult <laughs> but um i think the experience and uh and uh and using all of the knowledge shared by other people, it kind of help guide um, yeah. our decisions a little bit as well. Um, yes, and then uh, my journey as an MVP, um, I think it mainly kind of took off as I was learning uh, the M365, uh, the cloud technology, SharePoint Online, and things like that, trying a lot on knowledge of other people sharing uh, and learning as well. So I kind of felt like if um, I'm using someone's, um, uh, someone's uh, contribution as a starting point, and if I do something with it, or even what I've done with it, just to share it back, so, yes. um, 
<laughs> and then um, I was using PMP PowerShell quite a lot uh, to start with. And then if I found like there's, uh, if I noticed any bugs or any particular commanded or snippet of code, which I think it's quite useful for me to have it because I don't want like, to write it again just for myself. So I'll just shade back into the repository and in the end, um, I'll, whenever we, we kind of merge my code, then I can can you use it back right. in my in my I, workplace? So I think GitHub has also revolutionized the way we collaborate as community. Like people can host their repos and everyone can contribute to it, and then we have a very nice uh, central repository of reusable assets. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's uh, it's it's kind of have everyone. That's I can't. I, Firmly believe in sharing is caring. Uh, that's something yeah. which started with Vesa, <laughs> with his uh, PNP initiatives. I, you know, right. PNP, I think it stands for patterns and practices. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. okay. oh, that's cool. cool. So how was the day? Can you explain like or describe how were you feeling the day you came to know that you have been recognized as the most valuable professional and you read that email? Tell us something about those moments. How did you feel? Were, were you like jumping with joy? I was jumping with joy and my <laughs> house members were saying, this guy has gone crazy today. <laughs> I was yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I also... the first time. yeah, I also bought my first time MVP this year. So too excited with it. Yeah. I was over the moon. And then um, I think the process for, uh, for mine and a few of those who are like in the same, um, who were kind of nominated at the same time as me, uh, it took a little bit longer. The process took at least like five, five, six months before, um, before we kind of announced the results. But uh, and then we were still not very sure whether, um, uh, whether it when it was going to be announced because normally we announce it on the first of each month, and then there was a gap of three months four months where we didn't announce anything uh, because um, um, uh, yeah, because we we driven the platform and uh, we're still trying to get used to it and then uh, and then the email came not on the first of the month but uh, uh, I think it was around the 8th or 9th of January and then I was like hmm <laughs> maybe not and then because we had and then I was a bit suspicious I was like oh is that real is that a spam or anything I was not so sure and I didn't want like, to celebrate straight away and and then after I saw like people posting on the uh, <laughs> On Twitter, <laughs> I was then uh, I was then being awarded. I was like, "Oh, that's that's real. <laughs> it should be." It. That is real. And then I went back and read the email again, and I was like, "Yay!" <laughs> that is so cool. It feels so good when the hard work uh, pays off like this, right? I mean, you do a lot of community contribution and uh, being recognized as as MVP. Uh, I think it fuels that passion more. Uh, like. Uh, you have been doing community contributions for a long time, but getting into that uh, space of MVP makes you feel uh, special. And it's like a appreciation back from Microsoft as well that, yes, we recognize your efforts. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, when I started it, it was more like um, uh, just uh, sharing my knowledge and not really expecting anything back from it but it's very nice uh, to see uh, like people appreciate what uh, what you're doing and uh, and the positive feedback and and eventually like uh, going through the extra mile of uh, nominating me and going through the process is it's just so uh, amazing feeling and, um, and you were at MVP Global Summit this year in Seattle Yes, I was, yeah. and it yeah. was. Yeah. Really... <laughs> yeah. Can you share some of your experience there? And we met there. I was so glad to meet you. Uh, I hope to see you next year again, if if I still remain MVP. But definitely, if uh, I go there, I look forward to meet you. But can you share some of your experience of MVP Summit? Mm -hmm. I think for me, because I've been awarded in January 2024, so uh, my renewal is not due until next um, next March. So that means I'm eligible to go if I want to go for next year. And nice. this is <laughs> <the> timing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah, it was so amazing. It's just like um, seeing a lot of your community heroes like face to face for the first time. It was like, oh, <laughs> it's such an um, incredible feeling because uh, I have learned so much from so many people and be able like, to put a face to someone's name and meet them. And um, and really, um, everyone was so chilled out. Uh, uh, we got to um, attend a lot of amazing workshop sessions uh, with um, many in the same, like many um, interested in the same field, in the same room, and and be able like to meet like. Um, our Microsoft representatives of each of the product team. Uh, that was again um, an amazing experience because I will never have thought in my wildest dream one year back, but I'll be doing something uh, like that. <laughs> and yes. and really, I, I don't think I've uh, felt happy. Uh, I mean, I just know that I'm not happy, but it's just like it's just like I think the bonding, the connection, the friendship. Right. It's uh, it's it's just like an incredible feeling, uh, which I'm still like feeling it. It's it's just it was only like three weeks ago, which is just I feel so far back. But uh, yeah, I would like to experience it again. That was my first kind of community, even meeting any other fellow MVP like for the first time. And yeah, so yeah, I would like to repeat. <laughs> That's amazing. How was Seattle? Did you visit it some? places space needle chihuly garden yeah. see we had a new i had okay basically for me i had only one day to do sightseeing and then uh, and then depending on late evenings if you're not like socializing within the microsoft campus um uh but i think every day we kind of been socializing in some kind of even so it was only one day where i we could i could go and see visit seattle so we visited the museum of light um uh, uh which was which was very really 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 interesting with uh, uh planes from from the very first boeing plane which was built until the last one going into each of the planes to visit i was good and we went to the um downtown um uh, seattle uh we kind of um yeah uh kind of debated whether to go on top of a space needle because on that day it was just pouring and the weather was not great and we were sure we we're not going to have a nice view if we go on the top so we kind of didn't do that yes 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 i, yes, I yes. did that and the view is actually very amazing because on one side is all the lakes you can see and on the other side you can see all the mountains so it is yeah. definitely worth going yes yes <laughs> yes and i think uh just being on the campus it was more like uh visiting the campus with different uh with different uh attractions <laughs> yes i think microsoft campus is uh equally good in terms of uh and you can call it as an attraction of seattle and yes. it feels so good when you are having that VIP tag with you. Like you can go to Microsoft Store with a VIP pass and you can do some shopping. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the store, but I didn't buy anything. But here. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. So so how what will be your uh suggestions to people who want to become MVP and if someone wants to build their career in let's say M365 space how can they start learning this platform what type of certifications can they do yeah. I have done quite a few certifications so but really I have not really used much of the knowledge I've learned from a certification so it's a lot I would say like from hands-on uh, uh, practical experience that's kind of what I remember but it's very useful uh, especially when you're starting um, to uh, to kind of learn about the platform and we have loads of different resources uh, my first go uh, point is microsoft learn um to kind of get like the uh kind of the yeah learn and get the background uh about any uh any any particular 
technology. I mean, first of all, I would say it encompasses quite a lot of different technologies like SharePoint, Teams, uh, even Power Platform. I would consider part of Empress's file, but maybe it should be deep. <laughs> Everything is kind of connected to each other, even though like Dynamics for 65 again, however, for 65. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then uh, I mean, for me, yeah. So Microsoft Learn, and then uh, and then depending on the technology areas you're focusing, there are loads of uh, YouTube channels. If uh, video is your um, um, main preference for learning, you have blog posts. Uh, again, a different forms of learning. Uh, um, again, but then depending on time that you might have for me like just to stay on top of technologies i find it very helpful um to follow certain people on social media on linkedin on on twitter as well learning from the inside and then we have uh, the big pnp initiatives uh <laughs> led wow. by by a team by a team behind but uh, i kind of know this up i i said um from uh, his other main face, but yeah, there are, lo uh, there are loads of more people working on it. Uh, we do loads of community calls on a weekly basis, and I found it um, really helpful with uh, people from Microsoft or from the community uh, demoing what they build, or, or just like explaining um, any particular technology. And um, it's kind of show you like the possibilities, what you can do. Um, and uh, yeah, and then now uh, you do have um, the, uh, the open source um, uh, repositories as well from where you can get samples. Yeah. I, found it, right. I found it really helpful uh, if ever you have like any uh, particular um, problem or particular solutions that you want to build, I definitely recommend checking the used repositories to see if someone else has already built it. And even right. if it's basically kind of same to what you want to achieve, you can tailor it to your needs and don't start yeah. from scratch. Right. No, I totally agree because in last, I would say, last few years five to six years the community collaboration has increased exponentially and as you said following the right people of your technology space can make a big difference and then you don't need to read a blog every day you can actually just follow them on linkedin and twitter and they will announce what's new and you suddenly know it from your feed and also like github uh, has a lot of repositories where people contribute so yeah always you know stay active in community and you will always be on your learning journey and you yeah, won't be alone right. there <laughs> yeah cool. yeah that's the most important thing yeah. yeah just to know there's a community out there and there are loads of people who yeah if you ask for advice or for help and if someone see they can help definitely I uh, will reach out to you and uh, with a suggestion or advice or 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 anything something just to get you out <laughs> just get you right. started <laughs> agree okay my last question to you how are you using ai how is it impacting your work and what are your thoughts on uh, how it is going to impact the future of technology yeah that's a big um yeah it's still i would say like it's still very like with ai um copilot it's like kind of everything is kind of changing at a very fast pace what it is today, like in two two weeks time, you, there's always something new happening. Something new <laughs> happening. Yeah. And, and it's equally exciting. Like it's new plus there is so much uh, innovation happening, and people are posting about what they are doing with AI. So it's really, in, you know, interesting to see what's happening in this space. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. How I use it, it's mainly. Uh, I mean, being an MVP, you get access to GitHub Copilot, which is really useful. Um, and uh, and I've seen like how it helped me uh, to do my open source contributions. Very um, uh, be more productive, taking like the um, the um, uh, the 
uh, kind of a mundane uh, task of writing. Like for example, if you wanted to write um, a class with a different properties, you can just tell it, oh, please turn me the class with, a diff with these properties and then it will just like do it like instantly. So uh, this is something like there's not much thinking you would have done it. I mean, you just need to do a check whether it's kind of generated all fine. Yeah, I, mean, it, I can't impress it because it does all the formatting and everything. It's just right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. And then um, I did try like, to use um, a bit of chat um, and the copilot as well um, to help, uh, for example, to generate PowerShell script. But a lot of time I found it that it just hallucinates yeah. and come right. up with some. I, I kind of really impressed because some of the commanders you think like, oh, my, if, if I was there, if I was possible, if these endpoints were actually did exist, it would have made my life so much easier. But unfortunately, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always like you need to make sure whatever it's been generated is accurate. Yeah, we still need to validate it. Yes, that's true. That's why it's yeah. co pilot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. -pilot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks a lot, Reshmi, for joining us today. I would uh, like sincere thanks for sharing your experience and insights with us. And I'm sure it will inspire a lot of people who watch this video and give them more ideas about how they can build their career in the field of technology. It, it's really great to have you. So, yeah, I just want to say at the end that, guys, uh, remember your dreams are valid. And with your hard work and determination, you can achieve anything you set your mind too. So stay tuned for more inspiring stories on Dynamic Divas, where we celebrate women in technology and the incredible impact they make. Thank you, Reshmi, for us once again, and we hope to host you again soon in future. Thank you very much for having me. As I said, I'll just say one last thing, believe in yourself. We all have a superpower. You just need to find it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well said, well said. Awesome. Thank you you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.